Hello, it's James from xrobots.co.uk. This is part 30 of Ultron the Real Robot. Ultron is a real robot, as you can see. It's not a costume, there's no one inside. It's got motors and a control system and sensing, and it can do lots of things. It also has an external Bluetooth connected brain, so have a look in the last few episodes to see how that works. So it can control emotions, and it can get angrier with you the more you poke it around. And it's gonna have some more sensors and things like that in it, so that it can be a truly sort of socially interactive installation. I've also got a motion capture suit which I need to reintegrate, partly for sensing and partly for puppeteering, but I wanted to sort out the arms before I did that, so last time we gave Ultron these new hands, and also new biceps and new forearms, so today we're going to fit the motors in those, get the control working, and that will pave the way to get the motion capture working properly, so that we can get all of those features. So, let's have a closer look at what we've got, and then we'll get on with it. So we've got this bicep we made, so I'll just take the clip off and you can see that we've got a rack and pinion here that lifts up and down. And this piece can rotate, so as the angle changes, this always stays in line and we need to put a motor on there. But before we do that, we need to put all of the weight in the forearm. So our forearm motion is the hand rotating and also closing and we've got these strings that come out the back here. Now I was going to make these different lengths on different lengths of elastic, so the fingers get pulled up in order, but I don't think there's going to be enough travel in my servo. And there's going to be two servos in the forearm here, one to rotate it and one to close the hand. So we're going to make some brackets to fit those first, and that's most of the heavy weight because they're Metal Gear servos. And then we can come back to the bicep to lift the whole arm. Here are my servos. They're a combination of 9 and 15 kilogram centimetre servos. They're Metal Gears and they're pretty tough. And I got them on eBay. And we're going to use, we've in fact got three 15s and one 9. So we use the 9 for rotating the wrist and the 15s for pulling the fingers. I've just designed some simple servo brackets, this red one here, so the centre of that servo is aligned with this. And these brackets are going to be solvent welded in, so I can slide this uh, up and down to match to get it in exactly the right place. And then we're just going to use one point on the servo horn to attach to one of the points I left in the back of this tube, and provided the centre is in the middle, that tube should rotate fine, there's not much resistance to movement anyway. The other servo is going to sit just to the side in there, in the other orientation, so its servo horn will spin this way, and that will pull the string that's in that tube that pulls all of the arms. So I've broken those parts out there so they're flat on the bed. I've got some notches cut out here, of course, for the servo cable to come out, um, and screw holes to fix them in. So we'll get those printed, and we should be able to fit them right in. So there's one of those servo brackets, and just to clarify what's going on with those notches, obviously the cable needs to escape there, so um, that's what that cutout is for, and the servo will mount like this, and turn the uh, rotary part that way. These are the other bits and pieces for mounting the other servos, which will solve and weld in. I fitted those two servos now, so you can see one is here, it hasn't got its uh, servo horn on yet, but that will pull that string up to pull the wrist, so that will come across the top of this one, and this one is aligned this way, so it can rotate the wrist there. And you can see the servo horn pokes this way, so it always leaves a piece clear for that string to pull out of the tube. The next part we need is a motor mount to hold a motor to turn that gear to operate the bicep. So I've made this purple part here, which uh, grips one of the motors. It's the same motor I've used for lots of the other joints. And obviously we've got this clamp here that tightens up to hold it. And uh, that's going to solve and weld onto the side there. And uh, the motor has an offset shaft, so we can just rotate the motor around in there to get the spacing exactly correct with that other gear. I actually made a modification before printing, which is to put a slightly fatter or slightly thinner section potentially in the bottom there, so there's a step, and that's because the motor has a gearbox on which is wider, so it will grip it both at the back and front, but allow me still to align it forwards and backwards. So here are the parts and here are the motors. Obviously you can see there's a step in where the gearbox is slightly fatter, so uh, having that step in there means this can still be adjusted. Um, this piece can be moved all the way around of course as well, so we can bring that gear closer or further to the other gear. 
but it's tight at both sides and we can clamp that at the top with a bolt and a nut through there. I think I've got that gear spacing just about right and I can back drive the joint and push it up and it seems to stay in place there. Um, obviously there's no holding current at the moment so I think with the PID controller and the speed controller this should be alright and the uh, mass of the arm isn't going to push it down too easily so it should stay wherever I put it. So if you remember what we're replacing with the new forearms is this which was the old forearm and there's several episodes on this. This used um, a servo to push a motor back with some forwards between several gears to operate three axis. So um, I already have a motor driver wired into the Arduino that dr drove the motor, um, a servo connected which pushed the motor, um, and two feedback pots, one for the elbow and one which is here, which was for the rotation of this whole thing. Um, so basically I have quite a lot of things wired in, and basically I just need to do some recoding. We do need to add the additional servo for the hands, which was going to be another position of this motor. The feedback pot already exists and I fitted that back in exactly the same place it was before because this was exactly the same design that I used, this exact uh, piece of CAD to make the new 3D print. So that's the feedback pot for the elbow there, which uh, if we give that a shove you can see uh, it's kind of on a crank which uh, moves as the arm moves, this really doesn't want to back drive, so uh, that's good. Um, I've got uh, the servo, the new servo there and the old cable to plug that into which is here and we've also got black and red wires here which I'm just keeping up here and, and they go into the motor so um, that's all right we can wire those wires straight back in and just change the code. I also have um, another wire floating around that went to the additional potentiometer which was the one uh, in the end of this so um, I can just connect that to another pin and use that as the uh, extra servo signal to control the other servo. But first of all we're going to get this motor running again with the feedback and a PID controller and get that hand uh, rotation, the forearm rotation servo wired in as well. So the short recap is we have a um, an Arduino Mega on each side of the robot which is controlling most of the shoulder and um, some other bits and pieces. And we actually had that forearm mixing controlled by another Arduino Pro Mini. Um, and that passes two variables on, which it gets from the brain, which were um, for the elbow and the forearm rotation. So I'm just going to take those and attach those back to the elbow and the forearm rotation. At the moment, we don't have any data for the hand, so we'll come on to that later. Right, I've just written some simple code here. So um, as before, with lots of the joints, we've got a PID controller that operates the motor, and we've got a servo just operating that one um, servo for the rotation of the forearm. We're reading the data. So on this Arduino Pro Mini, it takes two variables at the moment from the Mega that controls that side of the robot, and then it does some PID computing stuff and writes this out as uh, analog pins, and then it controls the servo. So now if I shove some data into this, if we go and uh, where are we now? So the arm is in the up position. So if I go and put that down, let's go and give it um, a higher value for the elbow. And we're going to rotate the wrist around uh, outwards. So we'll go full extent on that. Plus the identifier, we should find the arm goes down and the wrist rotates. And if I do that, I can rotate it back to the middle, in fact, by giving that the same elbow and uh, just rotating the wrist. And I can bring the uh, arm up there like so and let's just rotate that wrist around the other way uh, let me try that again there it goes so that's quite a good wrist rotation and we'll just bring the arm up to its uh, full position and the wrist to the middle so that seems to work pretty well the next important thing is to try and get that hand working so we need some more data for that hand servo What's currently going on in this robot is the brain is sending uh, five pieces of data out to each controller and all of the controllers read them and that's the mega for each side of the robot. There's also another Arduino that controls the head um, and they basically all read those five pieces of data for five axis and they read and identify it and they ignore the ones that are not for them. So the left side of the robot only moves when it sees the identifier for the left side, the same on the right side and the same on the head. So um, each side of the robot of course has got three axis in the shoulder and I'm already using two axis in the forearm now, or at least the elbow and the forearm makes up the other two. So I could add the sixth piece of data to activate the hand, but then I'd have to add the sixth piece of data obviously to both sides and to the head as well. So um, all of those Arduinos would have to get recoded, the brain would have to get recoded as well to send six pieces of data three times um, so that all of them get data of the right length and they can just ignore the data that's not for them. But I actually think I've got a better solution than that. 
that means I don't have to keep sending all these integers around. So in fact, what I'm going to do is just recode the Arduino Pro Mini, so with those two pieces of data, it can control all three axes. So one of them, the elbow, will remain, so that piece of data controls the elbow. The other integer is going to get split up on a bit level, so I can use that to control two axes. So we're going to work with an 8-bit variable. So here are my 8 uh, bits here. So it's an 8-bit integer, and obviously those uh, individual bits represent different numbers. 1, 2, 4, 8, 16, 32, 64, 128 and we can get any number there up to 256 with different combinations of them, and that's essentially what binary is. Um, so uh, that will give me a maximum of 255 or 256 individual positions, if you like, on any of those rotational axes, 0 through 255. So um, that's all right, but actually I can get away with much less than that. So if I were to take only seven of the bits, that would give me positions 0 through 127, so in total 128 positions on rotating, which is more than accurate enough for me. Um, and that leaves me one spare bit here. So, um, in fact, what I'm going to do is only use 7 bits to control each axis and use the spare bit as a toggle. So if this bit is um, on and it's a 1, then it will control one axis, and if it's a 0, it will control the other axis. And that's very easy to do, because um, all we need to do, in fact, is say... Uh, if we add 128 to this number, then basically control one axis. So if the number is 128 to 256, or 255 in fact, then you need to take that value and scale it and control one axis. And if it's between 0 and 127, control the other one. And that just means I can always send these seven bits for the position and this one to identify the axis. So all I have to do in code there is uh, take that forearm variable, which we're reading. So it's the bicep variable and the forearm variable. And I've just constrained that to make sure it never goes outside 8 bits. So it never goes higher than 255. And all I've done is a simple if statement. So I've said if it's smaller than 127, then take the variable and uh, basically map that into the rotation variable we've got now. So take that forearm variable, which is between 0 and 127, and map it to where I want the servo to turn, which is uh, between numbers 10 and 127. 170. It's a 180 degree rotation servo, but I don't want it to go right to its end stops. Then I've said if the forearm is bigger than 128, then map that to the hand variable, which is gripping the hand. So that's taking a number between 127 and 255, so the upper set, and mapping that between 10 and 170 uh, for the, the other servo. And I've basically constrained both of those to make sure the servo never ever goes outside positions 10 to 170. I'm writing them out to the serial terminal so I can see them, and then those will eventually get written to two hand servos and we can test that out now with this serial uh, print here to see what happens by simply putting some data in so these are my two variables going back the rotation and the hand the data I'm sending to I'll type in the top so if I modify the bottom half so the number is less than 127 uh, first of all we need our bicep variable of course which is the other piece of data then the forearm variable we'll say is 60 with the identifier and that should bring the uh, bottom one to roughly somewhere uh, halfway in between 0 and 127, which looks about right. And we can make that slightly more as well by, um, again, let's just do 80. And that makes that slightly bigger, 110 we've got now. So that's our variable for the... Uh, for the rotation um, of the forearm and if we want to close the hands all we need to do is put a number in that's between 128 and 255 so there's our bicep again and let's go for 210 and that should bring up our second variable there and we can drive that all the way to the top by of course um, giving that a variable up to 255 there we go, there's 170, which is the top of that one. So all we have to do when we send the data, essentially we can start with two variables, which are between 0 and 127 for each axis, and then one of them just gets 128 added to it, and they both get shoved down the serial line, and the arm should respond accordingly. And of course, if I wanted to control yet another axis or some other feature, I could just add another bit, and I could keep adding another bit to each one, as many as I wanted. I could, of course, keep eight bits for the resolution of the joint, and keep adding individual bits, so we'd have a ninth bit and a tenth bit um, for each individual axis, and we could keep going as much as we want. And that's probably what I should have done to start with for everything, um, although I didn't think of it then. I've just crudely tied the fingers onto the servo with string there, so eventually they will be on different length strings with springs in, so they shut in order, and at the moment the servo has enough motion that it looks like to do that, so it's not moving all the way to close a hand. Um, the string's a bit tight, so that's as open as it goes, but I just want to demo that this works. So um, we've got to put two pieces of data in. One is for the bicep, which is just in the down position, and now if I want to shut the hand, I need to use the upper set of the data, so between 128 and 255. Uh, the most I can do actually to shut the hand is about 180 
So let's try that. There we go. And if I go back to 128, that should open the hand there. So that works pretty well. Let's just close it again. And now I want to rotate the wrist. So we're going to do, uh, let's go to the middle position. So that's the lower set, 0 to 127. And that rotates my wrist rounds. And now let's open that hand up again using the upper set, so the bottom end at 128. And that should open the hand. And of course my bicep can still move as well. So if we give that a value and we'll just, uh, we'll just close that hand up, I think there. So let's go for 170 again. Up it comes and makes a fist. And now we can of course open the hands by um, leaving that bicep still and going for 128 again. And rotating it round again. Can't remember which way this is. That is that way, good. So let's uh, go up a little bit more to this extent and uh, let's just go and rotate that hand round the other way, which I think is this. Yep, there we go. So I've just coded up some responses now to do with the arms. So what I had last time with the emotions, if I touch Ultron, then the emotions change and he has a reaction. And for now I've just hard coded those elbows to move. So if we um, give him a prod here. Then his uh, right elbow comes up and he makes a fist and it's the same the other way around with the other arm. I've done nothing with the wrist rotation so far but of course we can do anything with that and when we come onto motion tracking for the motion capture suit then we'll um, have all of those joints moving and of course there are still two more joints in the shoulder here to lift the arm out and to rotate the upper arm which we haven't done anything with yet. I've done a little bit of motion smoothing on the bicep joints, uh, but not too much because they don't really work that well at low speed, so the deceleration curve doesn't work too well. But, uh, you can still see a bit of jitter in that arm, but uh, we still may put a piece of uh, spring or bungee in to help that arm on the way up. Alright. That's all for this episode, but as I say, next time we're going to come back and resurrect the motion capture suit. So we're going to hopefully do some puppeteering with those other joints. Now we've got all of those elbows and the wrist rotation. That should be quite a lot of fun. So don't forget to subscribe for more updates on this project and other projects. Also check out my Patreon campaign at patreon.com xrobots, where you can get access to some exclusive rewards, including a live broadcast with me and all my videos early. Also, it's almost your last chance to get hold of my exclusive t-shirt design, which is going away at the end of January 2017. Check out the t-shirt store links in the description to this video below. Alright, that's all for now.